Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I will demonstrate how to create and use a template to send documents in BoldSign. Templates are useful when you need to send the same document repeatedly. Templates save time and are easy to use without formatting. Now, let me show you how to create a new template. The template I am going to create is for the bike rental agreement process, and this is the document I am going to use. I begin by clicking the Create New button and selecting the Create New Template option. In the Add Template Details section, I enter the template title, Bike Rental Agreement and give a brief description. This will help identify this template later. I'm going to upload my files next. I select the Bike Rental Agreement form from the computer, which I have shown earlier. In the Add Roles section, I specify the individuals who will receive the document for signing and specify the roles of each recipient. Templates are set up just like regular documents, but instead of associating signature fields with people, they are associated with roles. A role is nothing but a placeholder that describes its recipients. In this case, the renter must fill his details and agree to the terms in the rental agreement. So, I add the renter's role first and leave the email and name fields unfilled, as these details can be filled in later when using the template. The renter will act as the signer here. Once the renter completes signing, the rental company must verify and acknowledge the agreement. So, I proceed to add the rental company's role as the signer. To do this, I click the Add Role button, enter the rental company in the role column, and include the name and email address. I also enable the sign and order option here because it is necessary for the rental company to sign the document only after the renter has filled it. Let's expand and look at the show settings now. As you can see, when using this template, there is an option to allow the sender to edit the recipient's details, such as name, email address, signer role, and language. I will keep this option selected so the details can be modified when this template is used. Similarly, there is also an option to allow the sender to delete recipients when using the template. I'll keep this option selected as well. See, there are two options to impose authentication, an access code, and an email OTP. Additionally, you can also choose to have no authentication by clicking None. I select None here. These settings should be updated for all the roles added here. I leave this checkbox selected to allow adding new recipients when using this template. This helps if any additional roles are needed in future. Below that, there is an option to add CC recipients if required. This can be done by adding the email addresses of the individuals you want to send a copy of the document. They can also be edited or removed. I am adding the accounts ID in the CC section. Next, I add a document title and message to all the recipients. Here, you will see an option that allows the sender to modify the document message. Selecting this will enable the sender to make necessary changes to the message when using this template. The document title and message will be visible to the signer in the signing request email and displayed when the document is opened for signing. Next, in the document settings, you can select the brand used on the document. The details of the selected brand will be displayed in the signing request email and on the audit trail document. Additionally, you can enable or disable the allow signers to reassign option. By enabling this feature, signers can reassign the document to someone else if necessary. I will now click the Next button and proceed to the next step. With the document now visible, I can add form fields. First, I select the renter's role and add the name form field. Then, add two text box fields for address and city columns. Next, I add a drop-down form field for the state column and include some states as options for the signer to select from.
there are also two state columns to be filled in. To avoid repetition of the same step, I am using the data sync feature so that the selected state will automatically be reflected in the two columns below once the state is entered. To achieve this, I enter state in the data sync field of the drop down option. Moving down to the end of the page, I will add two drop down fields for the state column and set the data sync for both as state. Checking the preview, I confirm that selecting any of the dropdowns will fill the sync dropdown with the same value. After exiting the preview, I add a text box field for the zip code and set the validation and fixed width properties. Zip codes only have five digit numbers, so I select only numbers in the validation column and set the fixed width to five. Similarly, I set the width for the driving license field to 10 digits. Then, add an email field in the email column and two editable date fields for the start and end dates. Next, I create a radio button field and set up a conditional logic for it. I place child1 next to yes and child2 next to no. Then, add a text box field in the column below. The conditional logic will show the reason column text box if the signer clicks yes and hide it if they click no. After setting up conditional logic, I will drag and drop the attachment field and add a title to it. Then, scroll down and add the renter signature and date sign fields. Once all the fields for the renter's role are assigned, I change the role to the rental company and assign the signature and date sign fields to them as well. Finally, I review all the fields and click the Save Template button to save all the information. Looking here, a confirmation pop-up is displayed, indicating that the template has been created successfully. To use the template, you can either click the Yes, Use Template button to go directly to it, or you can click the Not Now button. In my case, I click on the Not Now button, which directs me to the All Templates section, containing all templates that have either been created by me or shared with me. Let's start with the bike rental agreement that has been created now. Hover over the template, and you will see the Use icon. Click on it or click on the menu button and select the Use Template option. You will be directed to the template editing page to see the template title and description. You will also see all the respective details added. As part of the agreement, I am required to add a renter. I add the renter's details, such as name and email address, in the designated fields. As I don't want to make any changes to the template, I click the Next button and proceed to the second page, where I check the form fields that have been added. The name and email ID are automatically generated once the recipient details are added to the document. After verifying the form fields, I click Send and the document is sent for signing. If there are any other modifications or changes, that can be made when using the template before sending it out for signing. Now, I have successfully created a new signature request using the template. In the same way, you can use this template further and create any number of signature requests by modifying the signer details alone. Let's head over to the dashboard page and now I'll show you how to edit an existing template. The best practice to edit a template is to clone and duplicate the template first and make changes to the duplicated template. This will not affect the original template. To make changes to the bike rental agreement template without modifying the original, I select the clone template option from the context menu. This created a duplicated version that I could edit as needed. I am going to enable authentication for the renter role. To identify the modified template later, I am editing its name to Bike Rental Agreement with authentication.
After that, I am changing the renter's authentication from none to email OTP and saving the template with the modifications. If you found this video useful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you for watching and stay tuned to our channel for more bold sign tutorial videos.